Hello everyone, you're watching SGTV. I'm your host, as usual, Indranil Basu. And today we have uh, a very special uh, cricketer, uh, Mr. Rahul Sangvi, uh, former left-arm spinner who served Delhi uh, for so many years. Uh, quite, a, quite a bowler. I mean, he served India in ODI matches, in test matches. Uh, sir, welcome to SGTV. Uh, good to see you. And, and I'm really excited because you hardly... Come in, in 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 forefront, you know, in the forefront. You're never there. <laughs> you're you're the man who's always behind the scene, working behind the scene, who doesn't, you know, I mean, someone who is not going for any attention would, would quietly do his work, get back to his corner. <laughs> and then it's good any... to see you. It's been it's been no. very long. I mean, uh, yes. I remember those days when I was playing for Delhi and you were covering matches and all. So you know me yes. best. Uh, even those days, left hand swing, I would just keep quietly bowling and uh, keep bowling from one end and see how many wickets I can get. So that's the same kind of work I'm doing right now, behind the scene, quietly doing my work, and the show is on. No, really. I mean, everyone everyone uh, tries to take a lot of credit. You know, they, they, they go for a lot of uh, attention, but you you never be like this. You know, that's you carried yourself. That's the best thing about being a a real cricketer, a gem of a cricketer, uh, someone I, who just one got one one test match and uh, never you know never got an opportunity to come back. But you never stopped performing. You kept playing. You know, kept taking wickets. That was really special. Well, I guess it's a good learning and under a good coach, Mr. Vishen Singh Bedi, he yes. always taught us to just keep doing our work properly. And I mean, I mean, you don't do work to expect results. You do work because you, you you play cricket, or you do work because you enjoy doing that. And that's how it's always been. And as you know, Bishan Singh Bedi is always never never in the limelight. He might be in the limelight for the right reasons, but otherwise, you will always see him behind the scene working with the youngsters and all that stuff. So I think I was brought up in a way under uh, able guidance of Bishan Singh Bedi that. It's not about glamour. It's not about uh, anything else. It's just about enjoying the game, working hard, and 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 then the rest is up to everyone else to see what uh, you've been doing. Absolutely. And and uh, how is he doing? I mean, he's not in touch with a lot of people because he's not been keeping well. You do get the opportunity to say, say you know, have yes. a have a word with him. Yes, of course, he's doing all right now. Obviously, he had a. Uh, a, a heart surgery. I mean, uh, I don't know what exactly it is, but he's he's doing quite well. I'm in touch with him, and I've been in touch with him uh, ever since I met him when I was a young kid. No, really, he's, he's he's a legend. I mean, in in North India, there isn't any cricketer who doesn't have a Vishen Bedi camp uh, uh, training session. Uh, you know, everyone from so, Yuvraj to. So if you ask me, I mean, he's one of those guys, a former India player, a legend, one of its uh, kind, as a left arm spinner and, and known in world cricket and Indian cricket. But he's one of his kind who was the first one to pass on the knowledge to junior cricket. I mean, he always gave his time for junior cricket. And he always used to say that, you know, it's cricket has given me everything. It's my responsibility to pass it on, pass it back. And he... He's always encouraged youngsters. He's gone out to identify young talent and work with them, take care of them without expecting any remuneration or any commercial angle to that. So he's probably one of the first ones I came across being such a legend. Always gave his time after retirement for passing on the knowledge and working with youngsters. And and I, I, I can't imagine anyone who's played, played for India uh, you know, in the last two decades from North India who has not been to a Vishen Singh Bedi camp, training camp. <laughs> I, I can't find any cricketer. And, and and of course, it was a tough match. Eh? Everyone has been there, but everyone had to had to go through the hard yards. It was fitness first and then about bowling and skill sets. Yeah. And he, he, has, he was very strict also as a coach. You have heard so many stories when he was with India, Indian team, when he was See? the coach there. But uh, he would test coming. you. Basically, he would make you grind you so much yeah. that uh, he would just first tell you have got that hard capability to do the hard yards. So he'll test you through fiddles and tire you completely, and then say, "Come on, son, let's try and see what you bowl." <laughs> so he had his own way of teaching, uh, which was first grinding you completely with the fitness drills and all, 
tiring yeah. quickly and then saying okay let's work on your bowling you know that's that's the magic of the game you know if you're dead tired if you can give in that extra 15 to 20 minutes that gives you the stamina right if you're really tired you don't want to bowl anymore but you still bowl for another 10 minutes or, or let's say 20 minutes that will give you that sort of thing which you need to for long journey also it was his way of assessing how much how much hard work a student can give in so he, it was his way of assessing a capability of a player whether he is is willing to put in hard yards whether he'll be able to work hard on his game or not and based on that probably he would open up with his uh, art of left hand spin and train any many players you know and and especially you know i mean you i mean for you all by you you've trained in you played a lot of a lot of your cricket in delhi and delhi the bowlers are treated so badly i mean i've seen so many indian top quality spinners coming and playing league matches office league and things like that they get hammered all over the park and uh, so and and but what i've seen in this part of of india a lot of and and now it's rubbed on to the entire nation a lot of preference is given in the playing 11 for left arm spinners you know i mean there are pe- there are teams which prefer two left arm spinners so what is this left arm spin why 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 do you think and it things have actually uh, you know i mean moved on to a different level i mean there isn't a, a playing 11 where there isn't a left arm spinner uh, preference you know there's a paranoid well, dependence on trans- well those things are changing now if you look at 2020 cricket the preference is left spinner more than a left arm spinner but In the olden days, where you used to play a longer version of the game, left-hand spinner was a must, and probably I think there are not many good quality leg spinners around those days. But if you look at uh, the cricket now, most of the teams have a good quality leg spinner and a left-hand spinner. There are teams who have played without a left-hand spinner, like Australia always played with Shane Warne, and they had Stuart McGill after that. Now they have no spinner; they don't have a left-hand spinner. So it's it's from country to country, and. Uh, I mean, province to province, and in domestic cricket, India fortunately produces a lot of spinners, which includes left-hand spinners. So I think that's the essence uh, of the game in in domestic cricket here. That every team has a left-hand spinner, and that's why it's uh, the left-hand spinner is given preference. But off-play, the very very cricket has changed big time. Everyone looks for a leg spinner first ahead of any left-hand spinner, unless a left-hand spinner is an all-rounder, then he gets a go uh, ahead of a leg spinner. Like a Kunal Pandya, <laughs> it's his. Yeah, it's yeah. Well. Aksha Patel, Kunal Pandya, many others, you know. Jadeja, all of them. Yeah, Jadeja, 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 yeah. Shakti Bulas, and many of them. Yes, yes, yes. So true. But uh, I mean, spinners. You know, when when T Twenty started in a big way, I remember two thousand eight. A lot of people questioned whether spinners will actually survive because of the size of the field, because it's easy to go after spinners. A lot of things were said, but. Um, I mean, 2008, 2021. Uh, how do you see the spinners? You know how they, how they have fared in T20. I mean, what is your take on? I think on? I, I think they have done reasonably well. So, uh, I mean, if you look at the spinners, the quality spinners, they've really done well. Like Amit Mishra, Ashwin, you know, Akshay Patel is doing well. Jadeja is doing well. Rahul Chahar now is coming is doing well. Kunal has been able to hold himself, and many others. Uh, Kuldeep did uh, a little bit for KKR, and many mm-hmm. others. So it's all about being. If you are skillful, no matter what the format is, you'll find your way to make a difference. Sir. And and the way the game has changed now, they, nowadays, it's all about hitting. So you anticipate that you know the batsman is going to hit you. So there's more chance for you to get a wicket. That's why Amit Mishra is the second highest wicket taker. He knows that he's a is is a wild fox. He knows how to flight the ball. He knows when to bowl the flipper or the quickish one. So he's reading the game and he anticipates that the batsman is going to hit him, and he's able to make a difference because of that. So. But and and obviously spinners uh, in T20 we all know that we're going to go for runs every second game. You will go for runs, but the key is that you know that the batsman is going to go after you and there's a chance there. So the spinners do make a difference, and every team that's the reason they all have have a spinner in the team. Absolutely. But in T20, do you think fast bowlers they have uh, made so much? I mean, is it the spinners or the fast bowlers who make the maximum impact from the bowlers from the bowler side? It's it's different situations there. Obviously, uh, uh, obviously, you can't expect spinners to make much of a difference in that death over. It is fast bowlers. Uh, mm-hmm. There are many occasions where spinners have come and bowl up front in the power play, and they've been able to make a difference. And at times in the middle over. So it's all based on the situation, 
who you playing against what are the conditions where are you bowling but i think it's a equal weightage uh, a team balance cannot do without the fast bowlers and the spinners it it has to be uh, a, com- uh, a combination of all all the roles of a fast bowler and spinner in a team so it's it's equal weight issue whether it's fast bowlers or spinners i i remember when i was covering you matches you could do so well on even on on batsman friendly uh, tracks which is a rare phenomenon and with you know anyone can swim with 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 the tide i mean swimming against the tide on a on a batsman friendly on a batsman paradise uh batting paradise you go there and take wickets and rahul sangvi used to do it so often during during his playing days i remember that and now it's it's t20s also like that similar you know it's you don't get any chance yeah. you don't get a turning track once well, in a while was, you know, there was no option might... like playing in delhi those days was flat classic wicket so you had yes. to play there you had to find your ways but i was yeah. lucky that i was i, I got good learning on on the able guidance of prashant in meri sir and learned the nuances of left arm spin how to flight the ball how to get more revolutions on the ball bowl slow in the air get the ball to drift and i used to bowl close to the stumps and bowl in the stumps so that made a lot of difference and i was very accurate so all those things all those factors bowling slow getting the ball to dip and drift and more revs in the ball and bowling wicket to wicket probably that 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 helped me and obviously when you're playing at that level you read the situation you try and assess the situation and bowl accordingly so all those factors that there's one thing obviously i was so accurate and i used to bowl in the stump the ball used to hit so the delhi wicket never used to turn and the ball used to hit the pads uh, uh, batsman pads but in those days the front foot lbw was hardly there i wish there was one foot lbw those days i could probably have ended up in more wickets yeah but but uh, now and also is- let me add one more thing the other factor was yeah. delhi always had good fast bowlers so my job was to bowl from one end and fast bowlers would be bowling from the other end so that yeah. also helped me as a spinner because I, i was so accurate and the batsman would always try and take a chance against a spinner where i was accurate and i had that opportunity be coming my way because yeah. delhi had so many good fast bowlers bowling from one end it was the other end they were looking to get runs hitting trying to go again for go go against the spinners and yeah. that also helped me a little bit but 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 coming to that that you know i mean the current current t20 setup uh, do you think the spinners i mean what's what's the ideal field set for a left arm spinner you know coming into bowl right after power play uh, what would be your field i mean you you're part of we'll come to the mumbai indians bit later on but what would it be your field you're very accurate. if you ask me the field place you ask me the field placement is more or less the same it's you, you still have the long on and long offs and deep mid wicket deep square leg a deep point there are only one or two yeah. subtle changes which happen so mid wicket moves on to deep uh, short point leg or a covers get, moves into a point and uh, and uh, or covers goes uh, a sweeper and you have three fielders which is short third win uh, point and the next and then like a square cover fielder so those are subtle changes will happen depending on the situation so if you're bowling up front and there are a couple of wickets down you try and bowl with a normal field which is long and long off uh, mid wicket covers deep mid wicket deep square leg point short third man and uh, deep point so at times you'll have short term and just slip if there's a chance to get a wicket but if the situation where the batsman is going after you you'll probably move the mid wicket to short fine and probably move the covers back and get three fielders in the ring which is short term and point and maybe a fielder next to the point so those are subtle changes you keep uh, you, you try playing around with and at times also you try and put a long on or long on off if you see the batsman not able to hit straight and only tries to hit square so those are very subtle changes so majority of the fielders field placement is the same except one or two fielders keep changing you know based on the situation but uh, you know those were the days i mean you 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 could you could uh... get so much of uh, accuracy happening but you know tell me something how accurate are these bowlers i mean you you have to sacrifice on the flight bit you can't flight the ball that often like you used to do during your time t20 cricket is all about you know you're, when you're playing t20 cricket like a jadeja or any other player i mean they will have to bowl with a certain trajectory and when you're playing ds game it's different but uh, you think t20 has actually affected the classic spin bowling left arm spin bowling which you you've been taught as a as a as a as a you know, as a child i think with, cha- with changing times you have to adapt and you you have to you have to 
bowl according to the situation and the demands of the game right now. So I think the bowlers have become smarter. The spinners have become smarter. They are yeah. able to bowl fish in there. They're able to toss it up and they're able to bowl to different situations. Like if you ask me when we used to play, I played a little mm. bit of T20 when it just started and before that yeah. playing the longer version and the ODIs and all. So like from the longer version to ODI, we had to adapt and bowl differently in different situations, whether you're bowling in the power play or you're bowling in the middle overs or in the depth. And similarly in the 2020 format also. So I think the more variations have got added in spin, uh, in, 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 uh, in spinners uh, like uh, uh, skill set. So in our days, we would basically, the stock delivery was the most important thing. So to be accurate and bowl on one spot and keep bowling there and then probably subtle variations here and there. But now you need to add more variations. So you need to know how to bowl a yorker or you need to know how to bowl it slow or cash or probably in the stumps or outside, outside the off stump or uh, towards the leg stumps. So I think the spinners are more smart. Uh, uh, they, 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 they have to adjust to a lot of more different situations now because the game has evolved to an extent where it's all about hitting. So the spinner yeah. has to be on the top all the time and be ahead of the batsman if he wants to make a difference. So there are changes which has come in. Uh, I wouldn't say that the earlier bowlers uh, uh, had more skills compared to the spinners now because with the situation with the evolving game, everyone has to evolve. And with that yeah. uh, process, in that process, the way you bowl today has changed a little bit compared to the way we used to bowl, and that's the beauty of the game. So I would not say that the spinners nowadays are not skillful. In fact, they're very skillful. I mean, to bowl against batsmen like Pollard and all, who, who are capable of hitting from a good length ball or any kind of ball, uh, I think the spinners have to be on the top, and which they are, most of them, and they do make a difference in 2020 or any other format right now. Uh, Rahul, uh, Kan uh, Sanjay Kansal is, is asking, how uh, to get accuracy and work in uh, in 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 ball like Rahul sir, which is you, because today's time everyone bowls fast. So that's I mean he's trying to say that you know yeah. accuracy bhi lana hai and you know have to be you have to be bowling fast also. I mean how 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 well, to balance key, it? Key to spin bowling is rhythm yeah. and uh, right basics. So you need to have the concepts clear. I mean, what I mean, that's the basics basically. When you have the right uh, bowling action, right basics, uh, then you're able to do what you are supposed to do. So it's not like in one go you say that you have to bowl slow. There's a there's a concept to do a concept to that. How do you bowl slow? How do you, so bowling slow is not just bowling, keeping the ball in the air and ball landing at a slow pace. It is imparting spin on the ball. So how do you impart spin? So there are concepts to that. I mean, you need to understand those concepts those are the basics once you start understanding and you're able to uh, absorb them and get them going in your bowling then slowly you'll see that you know you're able to do that thing and that thing so you're able to bowl slow even in bowling slow you're able to bowl, get the ball to turn or maybe ball to float and different things you'll start learning so i think spin bowling is purely like even like batting or fast bowling it's all about basics if your basics are correct you can yeah. actually Try and do different things. Actually, so true. And 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 uh, Rahul, by you know, we 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 give a lot of thrust on performances. You know, everyone wants to go out there, score runs, get wickets. But uh, one thing people generally miss out is that the real match winners of our times don't have a great average, don't have a great track record. You know, they they just go and win matches for you, and those are impact players. And it's not about getting wickets. It's not about getting runs every day. Uh, I was just reading about Sachin Tendulkar. In, in uh, 200 test matches, he scored uh, in 119 innings out of 329 innings. Uh, he scored uh, 50s and 100s, which is 36% uh, uh, of the days he played test cricket. He had uh, 50s and 100s. So, rest rest of the percentage, he never had a 50 and a 100. And with 36% success rate, he became such a robust, such a big, big star. Uh, one of the biggest stars this world has seen. So that that's that's it. You know, you have to be, you have to go, do good work on the field. That 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 culture that is not there. Everyone wants performance. You know, I want runs. I want wickets. That's it, it's also the effort of the players, which is I mean, you know, it, going it, out there. 
I think it depends on how you perceive things. I mean, obviously, yeah. within the cricketing fraternity, why players for a longer period? I mean, it's not that everyone can score a hundred every day. They play because yeah. everyone knows that this player is more capable of handling situation, different situation, and play that inning which is required at that time. And it's not about runs or wickets. It could be you bowling right for one and bowling thirty overs. I'll just give you one example. So. Uh, about two years back, we played in South Africa and we did really badly. And after that, we went to Australia, and I think Hardik was injured, and then Jadeja came in. Jadeja played the first test, probably I don't know. He didn't get that many wickets, but he hit, bowled from one end. He bowled those 20, 30 overs, which was required for the fast bowlers to perform. So all those things also come in play. So it's not just about scoring wickets or scoring runs. It's about it's a team game. It's about supporting yes. the entire team and addressing situation and trying to win the game. So. It's about perception, so that's the job of the selectors to see who can perform, who cannot perform, based on looking at every situation. And it's not about runs and numbers and all that stuff. It's about handling situations and going out there and performing based on that situation. So if you see most of the players who got longevity and played for longish period, they are the ones who handle different situations and be able to do that consistently over a period of time, and they get preference over the others who. Who, who probably would have been more skillful or more talented, but when it came to going into the ground and playing to the situation, probably they were not that capable enough. Uh, so it's never about runs uh, and and wickets. That happens because you're playing the game. It will come. If you're playing a game and if you're playing Absolutely. 100 matches, obviously you're playing because you will get wickets and runs. But I think I, I look at it as uh, in a way that it's about when you play, whether you can handle different situations that come in a way for you to win the game. And the players were able to do that really well, but always get preference over the others. So talking about preference, do you think uh, domestic performance uh, performances are given enough weightage uh, uh, right now? I mean, in the current uh, scenario, or how was it in, in your time? I, I remember I mean, selectors picked you from those uh, zonal games. You were bowling brilliantly in 2001. Uh, that was the time you played that test match in Mumbai against Australia. 2001, that historic test match, we won. We lost the opening game, and you um, we were obviously the fall, uh, the fall guy, which I, I don't agree with the selectors. Then those those selectors, you know, what they decided. But coming to the point, are they are the domestic cricketers, domestic performances given enough weightage these days? So, uh, I mean, let me address it in a different way. So, in the earlier days, only fifteen players used to play for India. Rest used to play domestic cricket. There was no other yeah. format in between. Which could yeah. be, uh, which which could be seen by a larger population, and and, and any kind of uh, you know uh, image could be made of a player. You know, right yeah. now, IPL and many other formats, uh, which everyone is watching. So you're able to see that apart from those 15 playing for India, all these there's so many other capable players. But unfortunately, in our days, there used to be only 15 players playing for India. And the, and the other opportunity was just playing domestic cricket. So the best used to play. There were many talented players. Every every department, there were good quality players in domestic cricket. But the guys who were playing for India. They were consistently performing. So the others had to wait for the chance. But what has changed now for good is that there is something called IPL and other formats which are visible and the players are able to compete against those best who are playing for the countries uh, in different parts of the world. And able to perform equally well. So just to give an example, Surya Kumar Yadav. So he's been consistently performing in domestic cricket, but when he comes to play IPL and plays all those bowlers at ease, or just like other Indian players, yeah. he gets a preference to play for India. So those are the things which is happening now and which is good for the youngsters. There's more platforms to perform on and be visible for selectors or the uh, cricketing uh, uh, administrators to have a look and give you a go for it. In our days, and as you said, I only played one test match and I don't regret it at all because at the end of the day, I was I, I came old school. My coach always said, you focus on your efforts, you focus on your practice, the result is never in your hand. And uh, the only thing that he said, and I also believe in that, when you look back, if you think that you've not worked hard, then probably you should feel bad. But if you think you've given your best and the results haven't come, then it wasn't meant for you. But you enjoyed the whole ride uh, of playing the game, which I enjoyed, and all those things. And I've given my best at every level. And 
whatever best was supposed to happen for me has happened so result is nothing that you can control you control what you can control yes, yes. but the so good true. part now is that i wish i ipl was there those days probably uh the many other youngsters or someone like me would have been playing against all those guys who play for india or other countries and would have been performing that probably i would have got more opportunities but that wasn't the case but it happened it's in evolution so which is happening now it's good for the youngsters now and i believe more the platforms there are it's not just about the 15 playing for india they're doing a good job playing for india which is important but the platform india has got so much talent the platform ipl is there right now it is a platform for the larger pool of players to come and show showcase their talent and which is happening now and that's the reason india is never in shortage of any quality player to be to be picked for the indian team so true and and nicely explained but you know talking about your time when there was no ipl and now talk i'm i'm talking about now uh, you are not playing but you're with an ipl team and 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 the fact that you're with a team which is really shown so much of uh, durability which is what what we need you know uh, so many title wins uh, you know and and so mumbai indians i mean that's your that's your home and they have done so well and every year you see the same faces same 11 and and the way they back their players and same coaching staff i we see rahul sangvi there in the dugout every year <laughs> so it's it's a lovely I'm thing i'm not a coach i'm a manager by the way <laughs> whatever you're not the coach but your your cricketing acumen i mean your skills your knowledge uh, that yeah. i mean it's not let's not mix that you know i mean you are you you're a cricketer of repute but uh, so what's was the secret of uh, mumbai indians i mean uh, michael von said it's all as good as probably better than he said he, he said it was better than indian cricket team t20 team but uh, it's actually a very good team and from top to bottom is just filled with all rounders everything is right about the team the balance the backup working throughout the year uh, and you know rome was not built in a day that's what this they, they say you know i mean uh, it's 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 work out it's 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 a workload of so many people coaching staff scouting talent going around the country sure. going around the world so can you just tell me the the you know just summarize the the real mumbai indians so today team, and why i mean a team team owner always says that the organization is all about people the right people and that makes the organization or the value of the organization so i believe it all starts from the team owners they're very passionate they're completely involved and they put a structure in a way that you have the best resources coming together and once you have the best resources obviously the best resources know what best requires to be done for the organization so it's all starts with the team owners and they have been really passionate they've given the time they've tried to get the best resources in place they've supported the entire organization uh in terms of yeah, yeah, whatever best practices we want to follow and supporting that uh to the extent that uh, we have our own cricket ground uh, which is what top class ground so that, that they realize that infrastructure is important when you have infrastructure when you have your own uh, 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 medical team or a fitness team how it helps the players to become better and also the resources that i mean look at the names we have in our organization in terms of coaching staff or uh, support staff from mayla jo wade to sai khan to shain bond to robin singh all big names who played so many years and and their minds coming together with the best players that we have picked uh, it all works in synergy together you know so i think uh, all credit to the team owners and obviously the group reliance industry is not uh, is number one because our bosses know how to make it number one so those best practices have to uh among us which is which is a passion of the team owners and they 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 give the best to it and their structures in place the best practices are in place the best resources are there so it's a synergy of everything and as again in one body five tournament as my team owner says organization is all about the best people working together to make it the best and and you know fighting till the end not getting intimidated by defeats uh working round round the year it's not a three month event for mumbai indians ipl is just round the you know managing the academy uh you know scouting the talent and and, and going all over the world you know scouting the talent <laughs> that, that that's a really special thing i mean all the teams do it that's, all the that's teams part are of the best doing part. it and you know yeah. every player every player in the team matters so the format is such that you have the top players and you have domestic players you need to find the best player possible and to find that 
best player, you need to put in effort and scout the entire world if possible, if required, and get that player, best player. So even that one best player, you need to work throughout the year to get that best player. So that's the best practices we have in place. It's all come from the top, which is our team owners. Yeah, so so true. And and what I really also like, you know, getting the combination right every year. And every team is good. Every player who's there in IPL, they they come with a reputation. They're sold at a good price. They they're all good. You know, all teams are good. All players are good. But getting that combination is the main thing. I mean, biggest example is Chennai Super Kings. They were struggling last year. This year they came same sort of player, made little cosmetic changes here and there. And here they are. I mean, they were playing in the top four. They were in the top four last last year. They were languishing at the bottom of the table. So this is what magic is. And Mumbai Indians. Crack it all the time. That that combination with you know this is phenomenal. And who does it? <laughs> so it's the effort that goes into the resources, the environment, the best practice. A lot of things which goes in, and it's a system which is running now. And the system has been put in place through the best practices followed by the team owners. So it's I mean if we all talk about Mumbai is now, but the first three years we're nowhere. In 2008, yes. 2009, 2010, we started building up. Uh, we yes. reached the finals, and then 2011, 12. We win the playoffs, but never came close. And then Rohit came in as a captain, and then we won. So a lot of things. So it's it's a process, and the process is working beautifully now. And it's it's so nice to see a Rohit Sharma. You know, I mean, what a what a wonderful uh, human being also of the field. He's just like a next door neighbor. The way he conducts himself is is brilliant. I, I remember one particular season. I think it was 2015. Uh, Mumbai lost most of their games in the first half. Second half, they came back so strongly. With Chennai in the final, it was 2015, I think, and not for a That's moment right. it was 15, right? If I'm not mistaken, and and the final was in Calcutta, beating Chennai, and what a phenomenal performance! I mean, you know, it's cricket is all about comeback, and Mumbai Indians, their story is like that. They they can really make those strong comebacks, which is so important and what a lesson uh, for every team. That's the, is it? That's that's the character of the team, you know. Yeah. This and I, and the character building also it's a process so it, it doesn't happen in a day it as I yeah. said it's it's, it's a uh, combination of all these things together the best practices best resources uh, best environment support system around the team passionate owners and that's what we call it as one family you know? so we are like one big family coming together and in the family you have ups and downs but eventually it's a family right and, absolutely and you 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 as a family you you I mean, you go through the situations, whether it's good or bad, better, and stick together and try and go game after game and see what happens. Something, something, you know, I when talk about left down spin and you are there right in front of us. So we talk about left down spin, you know, Kuldi Vyadav. You know, should learn something that how, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I feel really sorry because such a talent, not able to make, you know, it's low on confidence, not able to break it in the test team. But what would you advise someone? Because you're someone, I mean, you you represent someone, a team in IPL, which believes in comebacks, you know, I mean, which believes in, in longevity. By the way, by the way Kuldeep Yadav's first team was Mumbai Indians. He was picked in Mumbai Indians yes. at the age of 17, before he yes. was picked by KKR. So, yes. that's, we saw something in him. And of course, he's very talented. I think mean, he's going through a bad phase. He has to wait for his chance. He just has to go and perform at domestic cricket. His turn will come again. So if you look at Chikadalan, who was playing uh, donkey years domestic cricket and waiting for his chance, and then he got it, he's a different Chikadalan. So he literally, we played all we, we played almost five, six years together uh, before I retired. Uh, uh, and he was always waiting for his turn to play for India, though he was yeah. performing at domestic level. But it never came because the others were playing there. Seva was playing and Gambi was playing for Indian team. But when he got his chance, because he was consistently performing at the domestic cricket. He got his chance, he, he he availed it with both the heads and he performed so much that after that, no one looked to uh, lo looked at any other player. Then he kept playing, he's still playing. So I think Kuldeep, obviously, he's got his chances to play test and he's played 2020 for KTR and ODIs and all. He's in and out, but it's a learning. I think he's still yeah. young. He's spinners, spinners mature with age, he's still young. All he has to do is just hold on Keep working on it. Keep working on his bowling. Uh, enjoy the domestic cricket. Perform as much as possible, and wait for his opportunity again. And when he gets it, grab it in a way that no one can look at anyone else other than him. Yeah. 
No, really. I mean, very good advice. I'm, I'm sure Kuldeep is going to watch this and and take some, uh, you know, a uh, lot of uh, solace, you know, a lot of lot of uh, encouragement uh, from you. But you know, coming to the last question, uh, you've been a quality le left arm spinner. Who all are your best spinner? You know, top three spinners. If I were to ask you on your list of favorite spinners, who all would be oh. those spinners? I think I have all are from different era. Obviously, number one would be Vishen Singh Bedi, not because he's my coach, but because uh, he's like a song. I mean, it's rhythm. Uh, it's like rhythm pers personified. You know, his bowling is so effortless. There's such a nice rhythm, and the things he would do. Do I think even if he was playing in today's era, he would have done really well because he was always in control. Nice rhythmic action. Could bowl different balls. And 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 add something about him. He was always on his song, so that's number one. Number two is uh, Daniel Vittori because uh, the way he bowled again, a beautiful action could get the ball to drift. He's not, not a big turner, but had a nice drift, has a nice arm ball. And I rate him high because you know it's always been difficult for spinners to bowl with a kookaburra ball, which doesn't have much seam on the seam yeah. on the ball. Uh, yeah. Compared to SC Test, which has got a thicker seam, which we use in the subcontinent in India. Uh, so for him to bowl with that ball consistently and be thick wicket and consist consistently perform in condition where the where you don't have turning wickets like New Zealand and yeah. Australia and other parts of the world and of course in India as well, I rate him really high. And after that, I think in the current era, quietly uh, and silently was performed is uh, and not maybe the classical action is Rangana era. Again, bowling with a kookaburra ball, and he's been. I mean, he's got 400 plus wickets, and which is tremendous and performance. Uh, and he's been consistently doing it and quietly doing it. So I think he's another one who's really good. And I think off late Jadeja, he's maturing and as a as a cricketer and as a spinner. So he's also done really well, and he's also getting there. So I think I won't say this three, but this four, I I rate them good. No, really, and and you given. And one of the favorites I have seen, you know, I have seen him bowl very closely, is is Daniel Vittori. You know, someone who's who never had uh, any partner supporting him from the other end. He was, you know, like a one-man army. <laughs> you know, taking wickets, creating pressure from one end, taking wickets. He was doing so everything he was all by himself. Someone, someone who's always bowled on flat wickets or seam friendly wickets, you know, and he's still been able to make a difference. Uh, same was I think in Bishan Singh Bedi's era. He's performed in every part of the world. Uh, but uh, Vittori, because the Kukubara ball, it makes a lot of difference. The ball doesn't have much of seam. Uh, and when you are to bowl with that ball, it's a 40-over old ball or a 50-over old ball, which doesn't have any seam and in part spin on that ball. It's very different when you bowl with SC ball because it's got a thick seam and you're able to impart a lot of spin on it. Uh, so with bowling with that ball, I Initially, I remember many of our Indian spinners around the same era struggled bowling with a kookaburra ball. They were very good with ST ball. It took them some time to get used to the kookaburra ball. But Vittori was doing it day in and day out. So I rate him really highly from that point of view as well. Uh, apart from him being a world-class uh, spinner with a nice action, uh, nice uh, uh, you know flight and drift in the air and then the nice arm ball. So I read him, and same with Rangana Harad because all throughout, even in Sri Lanka, they play with Kokubara ball. And wherever he's played, mostly he's played with Kokubara ball. So to bowl for a spinner to bowl with a Kokubara ball, it's uh, especially uh, famous spinners like off spinners and uh, left arm spinner. It it is a little bit of talent compared to leg spinner because it's more risky than using your yeah. fingers uh, on the seam. So that's why I think Vittori and Rangana they they done really well uh, for themselves. It's also time that all the subcontinent teams start. You know, India is all all already, already playing SG SG balls for test matches. They're using for home matches. You know, SG balls. Sri Lanka also, you know, should learn something from India <laughs> and Pakistan and Bangladesh. You know, they start. It's always fun bowling with SG balls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, I mean, if you look at SG ball. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Last point. So the SG ball in England also the ball they use Duke's ball has got a thicker seam. So yeah. that's why I mean even Graham Swan and Monty Panesar and all those guys have been able to do well in England and all because their balls also have a thicker seam and it helps the spinners to live, uh, to to a certain extent, just like the SG ball. But the balls yes. in Australia and New Zealand and Sri Lanka and South Africa they use kookaburra ball, which is a little tough for the spinners to impart spin and make a difference. 
I mean, and 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 that's why we are just banking on India would do well in the World Test Championship. We want them to come back with the trophy. Uh, Rahul Bhai, thanks a lot for coming on SGTV, sharing your thoughts on every aspect of the game, spin bowling, your, you. your favorite IPL team. It was it was really uh, quite enlightening, I would say, talking to you. And uh, thank you, thank you, Rahul, thank you for joining to see Rahul on SGTV. He's saying <laughs> your your colleague from Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Gordon. He is my buddy from school, uh, childhood days. You know, yes, one of my close yes. buddies. Yes. So thanks a lot. Stay safe and thank, uh, thank you, Indian. Really thanks for having me on the show. And take care and keep safe. Absolutely. And see you in action in in uh, month of September when IPL yes. is going to restart the second half. All the best. Looking, Do well. Looking, and looking forward. Looking forward to it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.